Yeah, I don't think it was that different for us than maybe the average pair of, uh, of lesbians trying to get pregnant. We accessed a lot of the same resources. We went to the Future Parents workshop put on by the uh, LGBT Family Co Coalition that Mona introduced earlier. Um, that kind of introduced us. What, what was maybe harder as the trans person was, um, was those initial steps, the, the making the, the future steps of uh, storing the sperm prior to transition that weren't really apparent to me at the time. And I, I feel like that was a little bit more specialized. Maybe I didn't choose the best clinic at first and I didn't really understand what I was getting into until the time came to use them. And then I realized like, oops, maybe I should do this a little bit differently. I wish I had that, that information there before, but it really wasn't, like it was even hard to find on the internet. And that, uh, that makes it really hard to find. Do you wanna add anything? Um, yeah. I think maybe also we could just say that um, it was definitely a long process. And in terms of the lactation um, in particular, we actually ended up going to Toronto um, for Jenna to see um, Dr. Newman and lactation con consultants with his clinic um, because we really couldn't find much um, here in Montreal. And we know that there's other trans women out there that have, have uh, breastfed, but it's, we don't know them. Um, and we would really love to know them. Like it, it, was, it wasn't even just hard technically, it was also really hard like emotionally and trying to figure out how to just negotiate it as a family. And like, it was things that like I couldn't talk to my mom about because my mom would be like, well, I just breastfed, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and, and so, and like, we were like, but this is important. We really want to do this. And, um, and it was definitely something that, um, you know, anyways, we're, op people know us. If anyone wants to talk to us, more details, come talk to us. <laughs>Two, two different generations of experiences of an older generation who had transitioned and then had kids and were dealing with those family relationships and, and a lot of family breakdown, more than is represented in this film. I can talk about that afterwards. Um, and a younger generation who are transitioning and then making families and accessing, pushing the boundaries of systems, of every system, um, from birth certificates to healthcare to et cetera. Um, and so I guess a choice that we made, you know, four years ago when we started this project um, was to focus on the older generation because feeling like the older generation was getting less opportunities to tell their stories and that there are still a lot of, um, <clears throat> I guess I would say, shattered families, families that are not in touch. Um, and so that was kind of one of the, I guess at the heart of this project uh, was trying to make a tool, um, a conversation tool a conversation starter, a little bit of a bridge um, for, for the people who are actually at the center of the conversation, and that's the families who are not in touch. And so anyway, so that's a bit of context of why we're not talking about that in the film. Um, meanwhile, um, I guess what I would say about uh, trans people accessing fertility clinics or other kinds of medical services in Canada um, is that, I mean, A, like the legislation is mostly on our side. Um, what isn't there is the cultural knowledge. And so there's a huge part, I guess, that's happening in the grassroots where people are talking to each other. And, and this is where like the, where we're, you know, what feels like <clears throat> actually we're in a hard place is actually a really fertile place because we actually have a lot of community. There's a lot of opportunity for connection and for knowledge sharing. And we're actually a very skilled community at sharing information with each other. Um, so I guess it's like the self-advocacy piece about educating the clinics that you have a right to be accessing um, and as much work as possible to be, before you even walk in the door, I guess, is, is kind of like the advice that's getting passed around. And definitely there's little paths that have been opened up. 
by Jen and E.B., by other individuals. And so <clears throat> there's, I guess it's like the piece, we're still at a piece where like that networking among us is really important in terms of just widening those paths one experience at a time. Um, okay, so here we go. Why do people transition? Um, I mean, <clears throat> I can, I mean, I, I'll just start by saying that you know, first of all, transition is a highly personal experience. For a lot of people, it's a very spiritual experience. For lots of people, it's an expression of their health. And that's usually the, the way that I like to talk about it, is that transitioning was the best way that I could take care of myself. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, and, and maybe I'll just premise by saying, why, are, why is identity important anyways? What's up with identity politics? And my answer <laughs> is that you know identity is actually a source of energy. When you are uh, aligned, when you are confident and you know who you are, you are empowered and you actually have more energy and you can be more active and participate in the world. So it's not just like some ephemeral choice, it's actually like a deep energetic connection around your health and for a lot of people around spirituality. So it's a deeply personal experience um, that varies in, in, as, as in definition as there are cultures, right? In terms of how people, the words that people come up, the experiences, <clears throat> what that means for them and how they want to live that, you know? Because there's a thousand ways to live gender and to express it. That was pretty good, Remy. <laughs> yeah. um, hard to follow. But um, for me, yes, I transitioned at, like after 30 years of life, but it wasn't like it hadn't crossed my mind. Some of my earliest memories as a child were questioning my gender, not feeling right, not thinking I was a little boy. Um, and so it's, it's really amazing now having a child myself, like starting to think, you know, she's not very far from my early memories of of questioning my gender. Like picture a four or a five-year-old really having this strong internal conflict at five years old, knowing they didn't, don't fit their gender, but also knowing that they can't really say anything about it or feeling like they can't say anything about it. And taking another, for me, 25 years to build the confidence and overcome societal pressures to start making those moves to finding a place where as Remy says, is like the mind and the body come more aligned and you start to feel yourself. There was, um, most of my life, there was this, this noise or this pressure that just something wasn't right. And it wasn't until the transition that things started to feel more right. I hope that's helpful. I think, um, I think actually when we saw, Remy had, had made a little short film prior to this and we went and saw it and we're like, whoa. <laughs> and I, when we saw it, I was really, really pregnant. Um, and I think for us, it was, for, for me in particular, it was a way to connect to other people who had stories that were not exactly ours, but similar. And there's a lot of other folks in the shorter film and other folks that we've met through Remy that uh, have really helped us kind of feel good about where we were at, you know? Um, and one thing I learned in the film, yeah, I learned a lot of things. That Remy really likes oatmeal. I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> I was lucky enough to have a few sleepovers on the farm. It's totally taken care of. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess like the, my major reasons to getting into this film was, um, was to be able to give back a little bit to the community. I, I just, as I alluded to, I grew up, I didn't meet another trans person until I was almost 30 years old. I didn't really understand, like there was like, I, as a, as like a young person, I used to watch Jerry Springer's show because that was the only exposure to trans people there was. And so, I felt like this was such a good way to, to turn around and be able to, to create that exposure and to put these stories out there so they're not isolated stories and that, that people become familiar with these kinds of 
these kinds of ideas. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, I guess like, did I come in with any expectations? I mean, I guess I, maybe my expectation was that my, it was totally gonna like, the experience was gonna kick my ass and rock my world and turn it upside down, which it totally did. Um, and, and like, and just in several ways. And one of them, and I guess one of the richest things about the experience was just the connections, the relationships that I got to have, like the privileged intimacy, which also included me talking about my life a lot, because I was like the junior, and, um, and everyone kind of wanted to know what was up with me, and so we, we actually shared a lot of intimacy in terms of like making trust, and we didn't film that much. Um, <clears throat> we only maybe filmed like 12 or 15 days, like over a year and a half. Um, which isn't everybody, every filmmaker's strategy, um, but I, you know, but I had had a friend, I guess maybe early on in, in filmmaking, who was who had kind of made a comment once of being like, you know, you don't want to be a security camera, and that was it. Just kind of stuck with me. I was like, yeah, I don't want to fucking be filming all the time. I also want to be like connecting and and just talking, and for us to be like making choices about when the camera's going on. Um, <clears throat> and what was the. Second part. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess one of the things that I guess really hit home for me, like I guess as as like a trans person or as like a young trans person, um, was seeing what it meant to like, because I I guess it's almost like, and I maybe I was also like at a crossroads in my life, but it feels sometimes like, okay, there's like a bridge into my traditional communities or like traditional families, um, which feels hard. And it's like, I'm always just like trying to win a bit of space, you know, in a world that's not totally mine, I'm kind of an outsider. And, um, and that's a lot of fucking hard work and it takes a lot of energy. And then on the other side, there's like actual, there's like making new community or choosing family or like making, you know, f starting doing some of that like grass, the grassroots work, I guess. And I guess I think the, the experience of the film really shone a light on this path in terms of like really giving back energy where I felt like I was doing a lot of work, but I wasn't necessarily getting energy back. And, I, and this world is really important to me. Like I love, because there's, there's things even like cultural stuff that I'm not necessarily gonna get from other trans and queer people, but I'm gonna get from my family. I'm gonna get from people from the territory where I grew up, you know? Um, and so this re these relationships are important to me, but I guess I really learned a lesson in terms of how, actually how important this is um, for people at the margins um, and making the kind of world that we want. Mais je okay. Le film sera sur la télévision anglophone la semaine prochaine. Oh, what um, channel? C'est une station qui s'appelle The Duck Channel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Qui appartient mm -hmm. à CBC. Mm -hmm. Mais c'est quand même comme un super câble package. Yeah, yeah. C'est pas tout le monde qui l'a. Mm -hmm. uh, puis probablement, comme en six mois, il va être en ligne. Soit pour comme deux pièces un visionnement, oh. ou gratuitement. Je oh, sais wow. pas encore. Et, je veux dire, il y a des DVD qui seront en vente dès janvier. Really? Where? Oui. <laughs> uh, il y a un site web qui s'appelle transgenderparentsdoc.com Good. Uh, <laughs> qui, a une, qui a une page qui dit distro, puis il y a un courriel qui dit DVD, courriel, email this guy. Good. OK. So there you go. Thank you. Et puis, de rien. Uh, puis je veux juste dire quand même, je veux dire, c'était quand même une production québécoise, le film. C'est plein d'anglophones. Uh, puis je juste avant même que pour sauver le temps que pour que avant que quelqu'un pose la question parce que certains comme plusieurs personnes m'ont me l'ont déjà posé uh, online qu'est-ce qui se passe pourquoi qu'il n'y a pas de sous-titres français uh, je veux dire le contexte c'est comme j'ai fini le film endetté la traduction coûte l'argent uh, moi j'ai pas de l'argent pour payer un traducteur mais je pourrais produire les sous-titres moi-même. J'ai parlé avec Mona, qui, qui a, je pense que s'est présentée au début. Euh, puis on s'est dit, ben peut-être qu'on pourrait faire une petite campagne 
online, <coughs> une levée de fonds, 1000 pièces pour payer une traductrice. Pièce. Il <rire> euh, y en a une <rire> dans la salle. <rire> euh, en tout cas, mais c'est juste pour dire que, en tout cas, c'est une... Puis c'est quelque chose que j'ai parlé avec Ezra aussi, parce que c'est souvent un problème ici, à Cinema Politica, où ce que... Écoute, la traduction, ça coûte l'argent, c'est au moins 1000 pièces pour un film qui dure au moins 45 minutes. Euh, on n'a pas toujours les fonds. Qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire? Alors, peut-être qu'on devrait avoir un projet de levée de fonds, même si c'est 5 pièces de plusieurs personnes, qu'on pourrait ça le payer. Alors, en tout cas, juste, juste pour vous laisser savoir que « it's on my mind ». Et puis, euh, je veux dire, on avait fait un, un court-métrage avant celui-ci, puis on l'avait traduit en cinq langues. Et après, quand on l'avait mis sur, sur l'Internet, elle, elle a été spontanément traduite en deux autres langues, en russe euh, et, et en espagnol, en catalan, en fait. Alors, ça, c'est très cool. Alors, en tout cas, s'il y a d'autres gens qui s'intéressent dans la traduction, autre que le français, contactez-moi parce que, je, en tout cas, j'adore. Et, euh, en tout cas, on, on peut le faire. It's 100% deliberate. <laughs> you know, it's funny because as a transgender person, I feel like I saw so many films about what everybody else thought about transgender people and so little films where we prioritize the voices of trans people themselves. And so as someone who's seen a lot of films about trans people, This one stands out because we prioritize the voices of trans people on purpose, because we don't hear enough from us. <clears throat> I mean, and I will just say that there was Bob, Jenna's dad, who had a beautiful thing to say You know, there were the sons, one who was more outspoken than the other. Um, but really, it's an intentional choice to really, for you to, I mean, I guess, um, to as much as possible get a holistic point of view coming from us. And that that's actually a really rich point of view that's really rare, that you're not going to get that often. And so, I don't know, so I hope that people can have that attitude to just take advantage of that moment. I don't want to take up too much time with this question, but I think it's also important that you're like, if you've got a basic question, this is a space where you can ask it. Um, so I guess I would say that, I mean, transgender as a term that we use in this film is a bit of an umbrella term that catches a variety of trans experiences. And, you know, I would remind Ayana's description of like that circle of gender when we saw the circle on the screen. And in terms of like gender is not a polarity, there's not just men and women, there's actually a thousand different points or like an infinite amount of points of like, of who men and women can be. And basically, you know, earlier when I had said, you know, trans, being trans is a really personal experience is that it's kind of like choose your own adventure in the sense of, um, You, and this is something that, that we've really advocated for, I think, within our communities, is that you, know, you don't necessarily need to have gone through a journey that includes like hormones and surgery to be trans. Um, you can make a choice <clears throat> that includes any variety of like, you know, intervention in terms of like body modification, or it could just be like changing your name, um, changing your pronouns. And so it's, this is part, I guess, I think the bigger context here is that, you know, when I had started making the film, I had, interv I had interviewed probably about 20 different parents. And uh, one of the common threads through everybody was that everyone had had a media interview, often with like a Ryerson journalist. For some reason, it seems like it was a rite of passage for Ryerson journalists to find a transsexual and interview them. Um, but there was also someone who had been on Oprah and blah, blah, blah. But the point was that like everyone at one point or another had been kind of asked these questions or like been through this media process, right? And everyone said, 
you know, I was disappointed with the interview because the most important thing that I had to say or the nuance of what I had to say was deleted or was not included. And over and over again, it was kind of the message of like, oh man, your stories are like too complicated and we can't explain them. And so we're just gonna like go back to like the simple definition. And so I think we're in this context where there's actually been a lot of suppression um, and we're actually really behind in terms of like what are the mainstream conversations that we're having about trans people because there's been a lot of suppression over like information of all this basic information and even this question that you're asking, you know, and, and the reactions in the room is like, oh man, are we still at this 101? Because our lives are at the 301 or at the 401 and there's this huge gap of knowledge, right, between our communities and the mainstream. And that gap has been intentional, you know? Um, so I just wanted to like put that part out there in terms of like there's a political piece of why, you know, maybe you don't have those answers or you find like those answers are hard to get. Um, yeah, I don't know if I really can get into explaining trans identity right now. I don't know if somebody else feels like stepping up. Okay, so basically, uh, the film is also like a giant social experiment um, in the sense of, sorry, I don't know if that sounds funny, but um, I'm just gonna take a moment. Like, I guess like the question's like pretty serious. Like Stephanie has been estranged from her family. She's totally fucking heartbroken. Um, and we don't know. We don't know if her kids are gonna see it. Um, we didn't reach out to her family um, we wanted to center Stephanie's experience and we also wanted to try to make something that if her kids stumble upon it, we hope that it's an, ex you know what I mean? We hope that it's experience that's not gonna push them farther apart, but could possibly pull them closer together. That's a big wish. So we don't know. So we'll see, you know, we'll, we'll see if, if, you know, besides Stephanie's kids, and this is maybe a context that I alluded to earlier, um, but there is actually, you know, I, even in a way, like a bit of an epidemic in terms of older trans people and especially trans women who've come out and who've lost contact with their kids. Um, and we could have made a film where that was the majority of the stories. Um, but we strategically decided to make a film to try to model other examples. And even Lee, who's a bit kind of prickly in his relationship, is still in relationship and they still get to talk about things, and that's still very real and kind of regular for families, I think. So besides Stephanie's kids, there's actually a lot of kids um, who aren't in contact, you know, and who don't necessarily have the resources or know how to find skilled resource people to talk about this with. One of the other things that happened with this film was, um, <clears throat> originally we want, you know, there was a missing middle we see babies and we see adults. We don't see any kids between two and 25. Um, and that's intentional on the side of the kids. Um, there was a clear message, you know, when I was talking to families and talking to kids about what it would mean to be in a film that was gonna be on television, and the answer was no. I don't feel safe. I'm gonna be bullied, you know, and there was lots of conversations between siblings. Um, and that was, and I mean, and that's what I'm glad I get to talk about this right now because because I think that that's actually an important context is that we're still in a place where the kids don't necessarily feel safe coming out about their parents. And that's not everyone, but that's a lot of kids. Um, and it's a commitment to be on this film and to have that, you know, those repercussions in your classroom. So, and I guess I would just, you know, offer that knowledge to you as an example, right, of like how big this, this, this experience can be when it's you. So, and that's really, and I mean, and yes, we wanna build the bridge to, non, to people outside of our community, but we wanna do it in a way where we're trying to take care of the people at the heart of the film, which is those relationships that are severed.